song involving hundreds of children, thousands of children. The 12 fact. Dreams of the Sun called this, with an, each act culminating at, at, at a, a point of midnight, at a point of uh, the new year being ushered in somewhere in the world. And of course, the pyramids are associated in their construction with the sun, the important uh, god to the Egyptians, the sun god Ra, uh, uh, also an important inspiration for Jean-Michel Jarre as he developed this particular composition for this event, a dramatic one that is said to draw some 50,000 people to the Giza Plateau. And Joey, there had been talk, uh, very, very serious talk, of a helicopter coming in and placing a golden cap on the Great Pyramid just as midnight approached. Now, that was scrapped because these are precious relics, uh, wonders of the world, and there was great concern that that could cause damage uh, to the structure. And as you've looked, uh, we have seen the Sphinx a couple times in the course of the coverage over the last hour. Uh, the Sphinx, of course, is a beautiful creation of antiquity, and yet you do see the damage over time. There was some question about that. There's also been a great deal of concern for Egypt for security. After all, Egypt is still recovering from uh, the massacre at Luxor from a few years back, where so many tourists, uh, 50 some odd tourists were killed, and they have been trying to regenerate interest, international travel and tourism interest in their country. It does appear that this event has drawn a great deal of interest. In fact, I read somewhere that uh, this is one of the three main events of the world that international travelers wanted to go to for the millennium. Well, you can certainly see why. And uh, the light show that uh, is promised up against the pyramids is something that we have yet to uh, yet to see here. Uh, but but clearly, the uh, the significance of these structures, the ancient uh, civilization that emanated from Egypt itself, the fact that Egypt is celebrating its seventh millennium as the as the world marking on the Gregorian calendar celebrates. Uh, the year 2000, it makes this a, a, a key, a key location. We're going to keep watch on Giza in the upper part of your screen there to see if we see the pyrotechnics at the... On Giza and on Egypt as a tourist attraction, this country wanted very much to be part of this worldwide celebration. And to that end, they had commissioned uh, uh, Jean-Michel Jarre to create the... 12 Dreams of the Sun, a spectacular concert which began about 10.30 local time and will continue to 1.30 local time and then pick up again just before sunrise to attract some 50,000 people, including President Mubarak of Egypt, and also attract worldwide attention. And Frank, you mentioned tourism, and Joey, you did as well. This is a record year for tourism in Egypt. They're very proud of that. In the last six years, it, it has gone up from 2 million international visitors a year to this year nearly 5 million. And uh, the Minister of Tourism is hopeful that the attention focused from this celebration and the spectacular showing of fireworks and pyrotechnics and music and all of the positive attention will bring still more people here. The reason why uh, you have not seen much of the pyramids themselves their view has been obscured not only by the pyrotechnics and the, and the smoke that results from them, but because there has been a haze over this entire area obscuring anything farther than uh, two, three hundred feet. That has been very frustrating for the organizers of this concert because as we saw over the past two nights in the dress rehearsals, there were a series of, uh, of effects that were using the pyramids, the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau, as a canvas, literally a canvas, to show various figures and, and light spectaculars on those pyramids. And unfortunately, the view of that has been largely obscured. Therefore, they have stepped up the use of pyrotechnics to punctuate the various acts of these 12 dreams of the sun throughout the night. And from our vantage point, we've been hearing the crowd has erupted with joy, and they apparently have, have enjoyed everything thus far. And this uh, celebration, you're seeing some of the pyramids there. The, uh, uh, some of the celebrants will be here throughout the night until the dawn. And, and Jim, uh, this, of course, is... Yes, Frank. Jim, if I can jump in. You mentioned the crowd there. I don't know how much of that crowd, maybe you can help us with this, how much of that crowd is uh, from outside of Egypt? It's still Ramadan there. President Mubarak has asked that that, be, that that be respected. And there were some who were saying that this show was largely being put on for the world and not for the, uh, for the uh, indigenous population. How much of, the, how much of that is, well, is... How much of those folks are, uh, are Egyptians? Uh, uh, well, there are all of the government officials here, uh, of course, and, and the ticket prices are very reasonable. 50 uh, Egyptian pounds, which is the equivalent of about 14 and a half U.S. dollars for, for a ticket, or uh, 
400 Egyptian pounds if you wanted a seat higher up, including dinner. Uh, uh, we're expecting that at least uh, a good percentage, frankly, of the people here are from Egypt. However, there is a, a great deal of international interest as well. However, the uh, the Minister of Tourism noted to me yesterday that because of the various warnings of terrorism, the number has been reduced from what they had expected to come from abroad. Frank? Jim Murray, we will be back to you. That is quite a show there by the pyramids, isn't that? The Just 12, amazing. Twelve Dreams of the Sun is the way they have built this particular event, and that refers to the passing of the sun, and it does continue to move on. The uh, new millennium moves on into Western Europe. Yes, we're about uh, 40 minutes away from uh, much of Western Europe, and, of course, we mustn't forget Times Square. à dos de chameau pour assurer un passage sans encombre à l'an 2000. En effet, l'opéra de Jean-Michel Jarre n'était ni du goût des islamistes qui dénonçaient une célébration sacrilège en période de ramadan, ni des archéologues qui craignaient pour l'intégrité des monuments. <rires> 